guys welcome back to the channel i cannot believe we're kind of coming to the end of the year and that it's already almost 2024 and obviously the best part of starting a new year is planning out a new system and i have to say i am pretty excited to start fresh again especially after the year that we've had i talked a bit about it in this video that i'll link up here with the planner struggles that i've been having this past year and i think a lot of you guys resonated with that video we're kind of in the same boat so i'd have to say that yeah it has been one of my worst years in planning this past year so i was really excited to kind of start brainstorming and planning for next year and just to like start fresh and hopefully find a system that i can stick with and that uh feels good for longer than like the month that i could stay in this past year i could not last anything longer than a year and it's been absolutely horrible so i wanted to really like think out this process and kind of plan everything logically and really think about not just what i want but like what i need and think about what's worked what hasn't worked this year so i wanted to show you guys my thought process and how i came up with my lineup for 2024 because i feel like i was quite thoughtful after the year we've had this year i really want a well thought out plan for next year so to show you guys i'm using this app called milano which is where i did all of my brainstorming and they have um a desktop version as well as the ipad version i'm just showing it to you here because it's just easier this way and i really like this because um you can basically put in all sorts of media types and it's just a really easy way for me to brainstorm for me to think about things but it'll make more sense once I get into it but basically what I'm going to talk about is kind of these sections here so first I'll give you guys a bit more of a 2023 planner recap debrief stuff that I used stuff that I didn't work and then I'll show you kind of the brainstorming that I did really breaking down like what did I actually use this year what did I actually need etc etc and then talk about what kind of planner and system might fit best based on that brainstorming then we'll go into my mood board which I'm super excited about to like kind of see the visuals of the planners and the colors that I'm thinking is just um really exciting and then I'll kind of talk about like kind of finalize wrap up the whole system so that's how uh we'll go through the video if you don't care about a particular part you can just jump to there and I will link all the timestamps down below Okay, so let's get right into talking about kind of the 2023 planner recap and kind of a debrief. Okay, so let's just kind of recap all the things I used this past year. I think it was even more than this, but I just pulled out kind of the things that I stuck with for a little bit at least. So yeah, if you guys want to see a setup or me talking more in depth about each of these planners or any of these planners, you can just scroll through my YouTube feed and you'll kind of see when I use them. But I kind of started out the year like I always do, which was trying to use a trillion planners. Like I was trying to use digital, I was trying to use a Hobonichi, I was trying to use all these different things. And of course, like as it is with every single year, like I'm more of a one planner, max two planner girl. And it just wasn't working. I couldn't use all of these things, right? Um, so I started kind of with the digital and I did really like that, but I obviously missed a bit of the paper. So I was kind of printing things from here into here, which I actually really liked because I do like to look back and see pictures and whatnot. And it's just so easy to add the pictures on a digital. So that's what I kind of started with. And I really love that. Now, the thing is, of course, like, I was doing most of the planning here and then printing it out in the aftermath and so I obviously still kind of miss the paper feel um so I feel like it didn't fully satisfy my planning needs despite the fact that digital is so functional for me and so while I loved digital and how versatile it was how easy it was how I could um, add pages if I wanted to add stickers add photos do all that kind of stuff it just it wasn't fully satisfying my planner bucket you know what I mean and by the way if you're interested in any of the stuff I'll try to link um, everything down in the description box below so just take a look there so it wasn't satisfying me a hundred percent and of course I started trying to play around and then 
I went into pocket rings for a little while and I just found that this size was like a little bit too small for me when I was trying to do like full planning. Um, so then that didn't stick around for too long, even though this was great when I was out and about, I could take it with me cause it's so small. It was just not big enough for me to like, you know, do all of my planning at the same time, everybody was talking about notebooks. And so I really try to get into like the whole notebook craze. I obviously got the Hobonichi cousin and like the A5 size is too big for me. I knew that from the start and I had the videos on the Hobonichi Cousins that I'll link up here and down below, setting this up, talking about me planning here. And I just like, even in that video, I knew it was gonna be too big for me, but like just because everybody else was in a notebook, I couldn't resist and I got it and I literally like did not use any of it, which was awful. Um, so that was that. Then the weeks, of course, every single year, I try to get a weeks. And while I love the size, the layout doesn't really work for me for how I'm using it. Um, and it's too small to do all of my planning. So that didn't work. And then I think I tried um, pocket or passport at one point, just because it was still kind of giving me the notebook feel, but I could get a little bit more leeway. Um, because you can like make your own little inserts and stuff and yeah again love this for travel love this for the summertime and whatnot but I couldn't do all of my planning in here so this was kind of just like a subsection of all the variations of planners that I tried and basically I think the problem like I said in that other video was just everybody was in notebooks and I really wanted to be in a notebook but I know it doesn't work for me and so yeah I wasn't feeling satisfied when I was doing something else because everybody else was doing this and it was just a whole mess okay so that was the recap of 2023 and so as I went into 2024 planning I really really was thinking about what do I need what works for me instead of worrying about like what's the planner trend and what's everyone else using and so now let me show you my brainstorming board Okay, so here's kind of my brainstorming board and to kind of complete the circle about how I was thinking about this or how you might want to think about this is the first thing that I would do is like go in and add kind of the notes and thoughts about what happened with this year. So for example, with what we just talked about in 2023, I'm just going to call this 2023 fails and you can actually format this if you want. So I'm going to make that bold for it to be a title. And let's just like kind of list out the fails that we just talked about. So for me, notebooks don't work for me. Like I know this about me, but I just have to continue to remind myself that even if I get tempted or see people on social media using notebooks, it doesn't work for me. And I'll buy it, use a couple pages, but I just can't work with the fact that there's no flexibility. So I really want to highlight that and keep it top of mind when I start going through what I want and whatnot so that I remember that this is something that doesn't work and I know it doesn't work. Okay, so the next thing I want to put here is that I like the digital planning for the flexibility of adding photos, kind of like a memory keeping type thing so I'm gonna put digital kind of for memories because I did like that part of digital planning um, and also the thing I liked about digital planning is how you always have it with you so the ability to sync to your phone so that I never had to worry about carrying a planner with me because I knew it was already on my phone and I really liked those two things so the third thing I really want to think about is how um, my planners will integrate with my work tools, like my Outlook email, my OneNote, etc. I think that was also a bit of an issue this year on why certain things didn't work because I was at work for most of the day and I wasn't necessarily reaching for a lot of my planners because most of the time I'm on the computer on um, Outlook or OneNote. And so just really wanna think about how that's gonna work. And then kind of the last thing is that I have to remind myself kind of related to the first point is that I need flexibility and rings give me the flexibility. So I think just keeping with rings or having some sort of rings in my planner system gets me excited about planning now the pocket this past year didn't necessarily work day to day because it was a bit small but in general i liked rings okay so 
those were kind of the 2023 fails that I just wanted to remind myself and I was reminding myself as I was going through this process but just for you guys if you guys are doing the planning to really think about what worked for you this year okay so kind of um related to those things and as I was thinking about those things I kind of noted down my three major wants so I put flexibility to move things around. So we kind of talked that, about that already. And then two, like at work, I actually prefer paper because it's always open and easily accessible. So sometimes you're talking to somebody and or a thought comes to your mind and you need to write it down right away. When I was using the digital planner, the problem with that is that you kind of have to unlock your iPad. You have to go to the planner. You have to write it down. It's just not as seamless as if like your binder is open on your desk and you just jot it down, right? So I think at work, I definitely prefer something that's paper. So I wrote that down. And then third, again, I already talked about what worked for me in 2023 is for memory and journaling. I don't like to write. I'm not a writer, like even though I love how other people's planners and journals look with all the beautiful writing. For me, I'm not a writer and <laughs> I have to just accept that. Um, so for me, I'm very visual. I love photos. And so I just want something where I can easily add photos. So those are kind of the three major wants that um, I needed to incorporate for 2024. Okay, and then the last thing here is um, what I've ordered slash kind of am thinking about wanting to use. So the first thing that I had was the Sterling Ink um, Common Planner in the TN size. And now that I think about it, I might have like prematurely bought this because I can't think of a way to really use this, especially after I just talked about how notebooks don't work for me. But this is the problem when you um, pre-order things, you know, like ahead of thinking about what your planner system is. Had I done this brainstorming before all of these releases came out, I wouldn't have ordered it. So yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, but it's okay. So um, that's that. And I just did a little picture just to kind of remind myself the layout and whatnot. And what's cool about Milanote is that you can add the media, right? So it's not just the writing. It's kind of nice to see pictures of like the planners that you've got and whatnot. So I added the picture of that and then I just like added this little arrow to link to it, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I just <laughs> bought on a whim was the Filofax Norfolk Personal Rings. Just because I know that rings is something I'll always come back to. And I guess I was right after I did the brainstorming. Um, so I purchased that. It hasn't arrived yet. But this is what it looks like for those of you guys who don't know. It's kind of hard to tell because it just looks like a binder. Um, but a 30 millimeter rings, it kind of has like the stiffener. So I kind of like a, a stiffer binder. And that's why I bought that one. And then my VDS standard poussiere, I went back to this because I've kind of gone down a Franklin Covey rabbit hole. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys would have uh, seen me talking about that recently. And the VDS standard can kind of accommodate um, Franklin Covey compact size. And so I've been thinking about using it again. Also, this is just like, it's a nice planner and it's been sitting, my, sitting on my shelf for a while. So I would like to use that. And then of course the 2024 digital planner, which is a digital planner that I just released on my shop. And I will definitely be using that because like I said, talking about all the um, memory keeping stuff, it's definitely something that works for me. And so I just took a picture of that to remind myself I will be using that. And then the last thing that I put as a want is the Franklin Covey zip planner. So I can show you guys this. So what's cool again, I put a link in here to the actual website. But what's great about this is whenever I think of something that I want or a new release comes out and like I'm trying not to just buy it right away, I'm going to think about it and put it on my brainstorming board. So not to forget about it, I just add this link here and it's so easy. So you see that like all the stuff is just on the side and you just drag it into your board and then you can just put in the URL and it creates this link for you, which is amazing. So that's what I did with the um, Frank Franklin Covey zipper binder because it is kind of pricey um, but I'm just gonna think about it for a little while and decide if I want that so here's the site and I've just I've been looking at this on the daily just thinking about what I want the other one I really like is this Alex binder so this Alex binder is so pretty um, and I really like it in this like green color um, so yeah, anyway, so let me just show you how to create the link actually. So what you would do is you would copy the web address here and then go over here and then you can just paste the link. 
press enter. And now I have that binder here. And so you, what you can also do is actually, I don't like to have it with the image because it kind of gets cut off. So you can just go onto the side here and click off the image. And now I have another link here. So that's kind of what I've been doing for the wants and stuff. And I'm going to continue to do this till the end of the year when I like fully 100% decide what I'm going to do for 2024. Okay, so that is kind of the brainstorming session that I did. So let's just tick these off. So we talked about the 2023 recap. We talked about the brainstorm. And now let's talk about kind of determining the best planner type and system for each of the areas of my life. So here... Kind of the three areas of my life are really work, um, memory, planning, and then kind of personal. Okay, so I'm actually going to move this up here. And you'll see that it's really easy to drag things around, which is nice. Because when you're thinking about things, sometimes you want to organize it. And being able to like visualize it in a certain way, I find helps me organize things in my mind a little bit helps me organize my thoughts just a little bit better. Okay, so let's talk about kind of the three things for sure that I need is the work planner, a personal planner, and then somewhere to store memories, I would say is like, or the broad categories of what planners I need. So let's go into work first. Okay, so we kind of already talked a little bit about the fact that at work, I need to be able to integrate with my Outlook and my OneNote, I also need to be able to have some sort of paper tool because it needs to be on my desk. I need to be able to easily write in it. And so, you know, here I just kind of noted those things again. I put, you know, need to be able to work alongside Outlook, need to be able to easily um, access at all times, like the whole paper concept. I need to be able to carry it on the go because I'm going into the office three days a week. And then I need to be able to see what happens within certain months. So this was like a really important realization because previously how I always sectioned off my planners or like my ring planners was by section, right? So like you have your schedule section, you have a project section, you have a um, miscellaneous section. And I could never pinpoint why like, my planner setups, my ring planner setups couldn't fully work for my work planning. <laughs> and I finally came to that realization that I think it's because for work, you know, I kind of see things in a month period, especially being in accounting. It's like, what happened this month and what has happened in uh, this forecast? It's a lot to do by month, right? And not so much like in a scheduled section. So that was really important. And so I came to the realization that when I set up a work planner, I need to section it by month. So have the tabs be months instead of like sections, if you know what I mean, right? Um, so that's what I came up for my work system. And based on this, it's really helpful because now I can kind of visualize that it's going to be a ring bound planner because it's flexible because it's paper, but it's also going to be sectioned by months. Um, so that it makes more sense for work. And then also it's not going to be a huge planner because I need it to be able to carry it on the go. Okay. And then the other thing that I actually did, which is really cool in Milanote, is that you can even like draw pictures or draw sketches or whatever. So if you go into the three dots, there's these other things that you can do. Like you can even put maps, which is really cool. Oh my gosh, the color one is so cool. Um, I'll show you guys in the mood board. But what I did was I... Um, use the sketch function and I kind of drew out what works for me then for a weekly layout at work. Because again, I'm thinking about how is this gonna link with my Outlook that has all of my meetings and that's where I do my planning for meetings and whatnot and kind of my time blocking, I do an Outlook. And I did a really quick video on Outlook that I'll link up here if you're interested, um, how I use it for work. But yeah, so I kind of then drew up a weekly that I would wanna use for work and again, when I used to do my um, ring planner setups for work, I would just put the timed weeklies because that's the weeklies that I'm most used to. And after thinking about it, I'm like, wait, like it doesn't necessarily work because in the time weeklies is not the most important part for work because I have everything in Outlook. I'm not really going to be filling in the schedule. Um, so we're just kind of drafting up like what are the other priority sections that I need. Okay, so that was kind of the work planner. And I'm going to pull this all together at the very end. So this was just kind of my thought process at each stage. 
Okay, so then after that, I felt like I was comfortable with the work and then now into my personal. So for personal, I wanted something that was flexible and that I could change the layouts at any time because for me, you know, I have an Etsy shop. I'm always playing around with different layouts and whatnot. So I need to be able to use those layouts if I want to or just try them out, right? So it has to be flexible. Ideally, I would like to be able to take this on the go, um, especially for personal stuff. Like I think of things all the time and it's just easier if I can ex access it all the time. And then the third really important thing for my personal planner is that I can use it alongside Google Calendar. And that's because I use the Google Calendar with my husband to figure out all of our schedules because we have a joint calendar so we can know like what days we have stuff so that we don't schedule something on a day we already have plans. So, so those were kind of the three really important things for me for a personal planner. And so here, you know, I kind of thought about what would work best here. And of course, like the flexibility to change the layouts that I could do in a ring planner. And that would be nice because my shop is mostly printables. And so I could test it in like a paper planner. But then I thought about it and I was like, well, you know, the ring planner is great for that. But it's not as good for on the go because I don't really carry a purse with me anymore. And so I'm unlikely to carry that planner because I don't carry a purse. And then the last one about using it alongside a calendar, which is pretty easy because I always have it on my phone. Um, so in thinking about this, I was like, well, actually the digital still works for my personal. Of course, we just talked about the fact that I like to use the digital for memory keeping. So that was like a pretty straightforward one in terms of um, how I was going to do my memory planning. The main thing was I just wanted to be able to do photos, which of course digital is the easiest. But I thought, okay, well, instead of just using it for memories, I can combine it and use it with my um, and use it as my personal planner. So that's what I kind of thought about here when I was looking at this and you'll see that I put I drew a little heart around my um, personal planner and what's cool again is that you can even link PDFs. So here I just linked the digital planner that I used this past year, which is my docket planner. It's on um, my shop if you guys are interested and I'll link it down below and this worked really well. Um, in this upcoming year, I think I'm going to use my dated planner, but if you're looking for an undated planner that has like literally everything, then this is a good option. And it was a great one for me this past year. So that's what I'm going to use, um, here for this, these two, I think. So that's that. And that's kind of like the brainstorming of the system and the type of planners I was going to use for my three main sections. So kind of to loop it back, you'll see that, you know, when I go back to here and look at the Sterling Inc. TN, like it doesn't really fit in any of those categories. And so I really bought it for no reason. And now I'm going to be trying to fit it somewhere. And by doing that, I feel like I'm just creating more planners, more chaos, and I don't actually need it. So. Okay. So after all of that brainstorming is kind of done in terms of, you know, what planners I need, what type of systems I'm going to use, what type of planners I'm going to use for each of the categories. Now I really wanted to show you guys the mood board, which this got me super, super excited. So this is one of the coolest things about Milanote. I'm going to show you right here. It is so helpful for anyone who's a digital planner, anyone who's trying to do something creative, anybody who makes their own dashboards or draws or whatever, anything creative. I just obsessed with this tool, which is basically allowing you to pick a color from any picture and it gives you the hex codes. And this is important because as you guys know, the hex code is basically the unique identifier of that color. And then from there, you can use it to, you know, create things in Canva, to create things on Procreate and you have the exact color. And so I was just obsessed. Let me just show you how you do it because it's so easy. So you go into the three dots again and you go into this color tool and you drag out one of these little tabs, right? Then from here you click it and you can choose the color. So here you can obviously choose one from the standard colors or from a spectrum or from a slider, or you can use this little dropper tool and select from a photo, which I just love. And then you can turn on the hex code, the RGB. I don't know what HSL is, or you can turn it off. And then you have your little color card. Is that not the coolest thing? I just love, love, love this. 
So what I did here, let me backtrack. <laughs> What I did was I went onto Instagram and kind of looked at my favorite accounts, including my own feed, and kind of went back and saw which, and looked at which part of the grid was kind of like my favorite grid. And so this was the time when I had like the grid that I liked the best. Then I went to, you know, Ivy Mill, Write and Tell, EO Edits. These are just some of my, um, favorite Instagram account and of course Philo Planner and I just kind of looked at a couple feeds that I really loved and from here I inserted the pictures into here of course I took a screenshot and I inserted the photos into here of course and it, like just by doing that it was kind of pretty clear my aesthetic and what I like so you know looking at these pictures these are really the colors that are incorporated in like all of these photos so, you know, the greens, the grays, the neutrals, black, this gray color, it's literally in every single feed that I liked. And it's funny because currently, I think the most popular colors are like the warm tone fall colors, but you know, those didn't make it to my favorites list. And just by putting this together, I could tell that this is what excites me. These neutral colors excite me. And then um, after I did this, how I kind of got into the Franklin Covey rabbit hole is when I put in this picture of Write and Tell, she was using this zipper ring binder from Franklin Covey and like that sent me into to the rabbit hole that we just talked about. <laughs> so I talked about like kind of obsessed, really gravitating towards the Franklin Covey planning system as well. So after I started looking at the planners, I started rethinking about the system again. I did a whole video up here, I'll link it up here, talking about how the Franklin Covey planner system works. And I don't know why I just like never stuck with it. Um, but then after re-looking at the planners or the binders, I kind of thought about it again. Um, yeah, then I just drew a little picture of the 2024 like I showed you. And so this is uh, my little mood board. Um, and then down here, I really, again, got drawn into Salty 22 dividers because they're kind of like that minimalist look. And, you know, I kind of forgot about these because the trend of the minimalist look has kind of moved away, I think. Um, I think it's because a lot of the big Instagrammers now kind of have gravitated towards traveler's notebooks or using warm tones or just notebooks in general. And it's kind of moved away from this neutral kind of setup which is what makes me excited. So again, I should stop thinking about what other people like and just go back to what makes me happy. And then here's the EO Edits one, and I love EO Edits for planner decor, although this year I'm probably gonna go less on the decor and just go very functional, but um, I have that in here because they're some of my favorites. So just looking at this page just makes me so happy. Um, if anything else, like if you guys are in a funk, I really recommend playing around with this mood board. If I didn't mention already, Milanote is um, free to sign up. They do have a pro version, which is what I'm using, but they do have a completely free version. So I'll leave the link and all the information down below, but I highly recommend that you just set up a mood board, do this kind of thing, and then just put in pictures of like, and then just put in like your favorite planner pictures of yourself, of your favorite Instagrammers, YouTubers, whatever. And I promise you it's gonna bring joy and excitement. And instead of thinking about what's most popular, scroll through the photos looking for what like makes you happy when you look at the photo and put it together in a mood board and I guarantee it's gonna get you really excited about planning again which is really what happened to me after I put this together okay so that's the mood board and then let's go into the final system so you can see kind of how it all came together so in um, here in my work section this is kind of what I'm thinking so we talked about that it's gonna be some sort of ring planner I'm gonna have um, the monthly dividers along the side and these were the planners that I was thinking of. I'm going to use the uh, Franklin Covey compact size and that's why I chose these planners because these ones fit the Franklin Covey planner size. So the Filofax Norfolk that I talked about is an option. This again, I got this idea obviously from the Write and Tell mood board or her Instagram. I really like the zipper black binder and then this one i really like the texture this is from philo planner or ali riaz and this one fits fcc as well and then of course my vds standard poussiere that i already have i could use that to start with as well because i already have it so that's what i'm thinking there 
Then we kind of talked about the personal and the memory keeping. I'm going to go digital and I think that's just going to be really functional for me. It's going to satisfy all the things I needed for personal that we talked about. And then I'm going to stay with my mom's one align a day. This is a five year undated planner. I'll link it down below. I just got it from Amazon and it's just like you write a couple sentences per day. I'm not good with keeping up with this. So I really need to get back on it because I think it'll be nice to look at this in the future. So, and then the last thing is what am I going to do with kind of the things I purchased. So the main one being the Sterling Ink Tien. I really like my blue um, standard Tien cover. So that's where I would put it in, but I don't know what to use this for. So I might just like end up selling it. I'm not sure yet, but this is kind of the idea there. And then here I just linked the personal um, Norfolk planner that we talked about. That's what it looks like. And they have all these nice different colors, but I kept with the black because my mood board showed me that I am gravitating toward the neutrals and the blacks. <laughs> okay, and then here I just kind of recapped um, what I was going to do in all those things that we just talked about. So that in a nutshell is kind of the system that I'm going to use. Um, yeah, once I get all the planners in, I'll make a separate video to show like the actual physical planners because I am still kind of like deciding here what I'm going to use and I'm still setting this up. And so that's like my thought process of what I'm going to use in 2024. And I'm going to make separate videos for each of these systems showing you the exact binders and the exact like innards <laughs> so if you guys are interested in that make sure you subscribe and stay tuned because the next few videos is going to be me going through all of these in detail and showing you the actual planner covers and like you know my setup of the digital planner and all of that um so that is coming and yeah so that in a nutshell is um my planner system and I don't know if you could tell, but this Milano app has really just helped me so much to do this planning. I love how versatile it is, how many different options there are. Like, you know, you can add boards within boards, you can add notes, you can add to-do lists, you can add the links I talked about, you can do the color um, picking that I absolutely love. You can add images, of course, there's just like so much. You can even add your like PDF, um, if you're using a digital planner, like it's just, it's such a good tool if you guys are looking for something that's able to capture all of your like creative kind of thoughts and put it all in one spot. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Milanote for sponsoring this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below. And if you guys wanna see another video on how to determine your perfect planner system, then I'll link my video here. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.